All right. All right. Um, so welcome to the 16th episode of the Gutenberg Times live Q&A. My name is Birgit Polly Hank and I'm your host and the curator of Gutenberg Times. Thank you all for watching and it's so great to have you. In today's show, we will discuss the AMP project, AMP stories and Gutenberg. And we will start with what's AMP and what are AMP stories, but uh, what have publishers been able to do with them and how you can take advantage of AMP and AMP stories in the WordPress ecosystem. And I'm thrilled to have these brilliant experts here with us today. Thank you for coming. And uh, as you can see, we have a surprise guest as well. Um, <laughs> so I have, uh, we have um, Alberto Medina. He leads the CMS development relationship team at Google and works on initiatives and technologies aimed at making the web the best platform to publish and consume content. Hello. Um, <laughs> Next to him is uh, Weston Rudder, um, and he is the lead for the AMP plugin um, on the AMP project team, the AMP plugin for WordPress. Um, and, um, and then we have Pascal, who is the lead developer for the AMP stories on the AMP plugin for WordPress project. Oh, I get it right. I, everybody's nodding their head. <laughs> Thanks. And then I have Kathy Bosco. Uh, she's a um, UX architect and designer. And while working with the XWP, with XWP, she worked on the AMP stories with the Google team. Um, so we do a proper introduction in less than a minute. Um, I have just a few announcements. Um, this show is sponsored by Pantheon. Pantheon is quickly becoming the go-to web ops platform for alpha developers and agile marketers you are, who are seeking to deliver the world's best web experiences on Drupal and WordPress. Pantheon considers AMP a first-class technology enabling the open web to deliver results faster. A big thank you to the team at Pantheon for sponsoring this live Q&A. While I have you all paying attention, I just want um, everyone to know that the next live Q&A is already next week. So we did a, a break between April and July and then um, do two in a week almost. Um, and next week is a discussion with Byline Times editor, Peter Yukas and Yes We Work team members, Andrew Staffel and Thomas Eagle about how custom blocks allow journalists to compose engaging layouts without the help of designers and how ACF blocks make testing and iteration easier for developers. So August 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern and 18 UTC. Uh, that's not enough. You probably already know that Mark Urain, designer at Automatic and co-contributor, and I co-host a new podcast called the Gutenberg Change Log. Subscribe to it with your favorite podcatcher. We will keep you up to date on what's released, what's in development, and what's next for Gutenberg in phase two. All right, so that's all the preliminaries. So um, a little housekeeping. So this format today is um, like all those live Q&A uh, went before, is uh, we do use the Zoom Q&A feature if you want to, but we can also use the release. Today is, Oops. Um, like the use the sorry <laughs> went over to youtube and it was automatically playing um so youtube chat um if you have questions that will be great um and um so where's everybody from do we have um people here yeah we have uh fabian from germany um hi fabian um uh, he did great work at the javascript for uh a wordpress uh, conference um two weeks ago or something like that. And um, while the others will um, chime in later. Um, yeah. So, um, Groovy. Well, we hope you all have questions, but um, um, let's get going. 
Uh, let's start with the speaker introductions. Um, Alberto, we are following each other on Twitter and for a while now, but uh, we met at WordCamp US and last year, but we didn't get to talk much. Um, I did watch some of your talks on Google I.O. and I.M. conference, of course, and uh, tell us a little bit about um, where, uh, yeah, you're from Venezuela. How did you get to San Francisco and what you do for fun, if it's yeah. not WordPress? Yes. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. So I'm from Venezuela. I'm sorry. sorry. To so I'm from Venezuela uh, and I came to San Francisco via Boston, where I went to school. So I went to grad school in Boston. And then uh, I, I landed in San Francisco. Uh, yeah, so for fun, I work for Google. And, uh, and when I'm not having fun, I like to play the guitar and waste time. So that's, uh, you know. <laughs> All right. And, uh, do, 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 have you ever played in a band? I have. I have. But that, uh, yeah, but unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't have to make a living with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, next to you is uh, the surprise guest for, for this uh, uh, Gutenberg Live Q&A, it's Weston Rodder. Um, do you want to introduce him to us? Or well, Weston, tell us what you're doing. What you're doing in our talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I know you're in Australia and we normally could get you the other time zones and everything. Well, actually, no, I live here. In Port We're in Portland right now. This is where I live. But I was on okay. vacation in Minnesota for... How do I think, the why do I think that you're in Australia? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I put I Alberto in into Italy, yeah. so... It's it's a common theme. Yeah, we work together on the CMS DevRel team at Google, and uh, been contributing to WordPress for a long time, and been involved with AMP since for about two years now, I think, or a year and a half. Yeah, two years, and and uh, he's the, you know he's the main lead uh, engineer, the lead engineer. So everything that the good stuff are his, his fault, and the bad stuff is like also his fault. Except for our <laughs> stories, it's all Pascal. <laughs> yeah. 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 So Pascal, you've been in a uh, uh, WordPress core committer for quite a few years. Do you live in Zurich? That uh, I got that right, right? Yes, I live in Zurich, Switzerland. <laughs> so what do you do for fun, and what do you do at Google apart from? making these awesome home stories? Um, so I've been uh, contributing to, to WordPress for, for quite a while. Uh, it takes up a lot of my time, like spare time and all. Um, but I usually like go uh, snowboarding, meeting friends, and traveling is a big part. Um, at Google, I'm, I'm part of the same team as Alberto and Weston. Um, I'm a developer programs engineer, so I help build solutions in the content management system space um, to allow publishers to be successful on the web. All right. And Kathy, um, oh. we have been Twitter followers for a while, but uh, you got my attention when you showed off your AMP stories and your photos from Japan from the AMP conference. Um, so what do you do now and uh, when you're not in front of a computer and um, what's your day job? Well, um, I'm a consultant and a UX architect. So I work with agencies and companies to improve their presence on the open web. And I like improving the open web in general on projects on a contract basis. Uh, for fun, I used to run a lot and I'm recovering from some injuries. So now I hike a little and uh, for fun, I like to really party and, and cuddle with my greyhound and watch movies and read and cook. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I'm sorry that you got injured. I, uh, yeah, I got injured in February too. Um, in, uh, I haven't been back to running uh, since. And it was really hard to do because it uh, helps us with the mental, or m myself with the mental health. <laughs> yes, definitely. Yes. Well, thank you all five of you, four of you, to be with us um, here and take your time um, to let's get into the middle of things. Um, so the AMP plugin for WordPress 1.2 version was released a little over a month ago. Um, before, um, but before, before we do that, maybe we can talk a little bit about the AMP project itself. Uh, what is it set out to do? Um, and I don't know, do you wanna uh, do that, uh, Alberto, and, and get us into the groove of this? Sure, sure. Um, to make it quickly, so in a nutshell, um, AMP is a component-based uh, web framework that is designed to 
make it easy to build sites that are like beautiful, performant, and what we used to call uh, user first. So that put the user at, at the forefront of the object. This was the web presence. And, and the project is characterized by several key parts. Right? First, it's an open source project. Um, everybody's welcome to contribute. And you know, there are hundreds of contributors around the world. Um, it's an HTML framework, uh, which means that there are you know, uh, a, a library of custom components that are designed for efficiency and high level com uh, complexity, but that can be used in an easy way. Uh, it's built for speed. Um, it provides a lot of coding and performance practices out of the box, so that that's one of the main strengths of the of the framework. Uh, it's completely cross-browser compatible. Everything that you're doing up, you can see it in all browsers. Um, uh, yeah, that's the main uh, element that define the AMP project. Yeah, and and it's a uh, it's a just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. There's nothing proprietary about it. And if you want to have an AMP page, you have to publish it to your own website. It's not something that you have to host somewhere to be considered a valid AMP page. It, if you publish it to your website, then it's and it's valid. Uh, if it conforms to the specification that indicates what an AMP page is, then it's, it's a valid AMP page. And then once it's in a valid AMP page, then it's eligible to also be cached from an AMP cache, and it's not just a Google thing. There's also a Bing cache, AMP cache, there's a Cloudflare AMP cache, there's other AMP caches as well. And those AMP caches are an additional layer on top of the AMP page that you serve from your origin, which enables for your pages to be served even faster when you're encountering that content on a provider like Google search or, or Bing search. technology, you know, you need to switch it on. <laughs> so for the first couple of years, AMP has received a fair amount of flack from the publishing industry. Um, and I don't know any time where Google hasn't received any flack from publishers industries, but by some of it, um, it but some of them it was seen as the big land grape grabbed by Google because it cached content on its own servers and at some point, assets that were, uh, were also linking back to Google and not to the publisher's website. This seems to have changed in the last two years. So what have you learned um, as project leaders from this criticism and controversy? Yeah, no, that's a, that's a very important question, right? Uh, so, so in order to answer it in context, it's, it's very important to realize where AMP came from, right? So. Uh, when AMP was developed, it emerged as a response to the origin need of doing something about performance of the mobile web, right? So there was, the situation around 2010 was so bad that a lot of people thought literally that the web was dying and that the wall garden platforms were going to basically take over and the web was going to die. So that was the situation uh, that actually triggered the, the decision of we, we need to do something or we are gonna be all out of out of business, right? So, at the moment that AMP was developed, there would, you know there were a lot of decisions that needed to be made, right? So, like, how do we achieve near instant loading, right, in an environment like the web? Um, how do prevent? How do we prevent uh, the addition of components in a website that block the rendering of the site? So, there were a lot of questions, challenging questions that actually were reflected of the bad performance of the web. And then a lot of decisions were made. Um, some were like, you know, many of them were right on target. Some of them were um, more difficult to make. Like, for example, the addition of an AMP cache that given the technology available at the time needed to be served with the URL of the cache rather than the URL directly of the origin and so on. Um, for example, also given the limitations of the library at the beginning, it was decided that AMP would be served as a pair mode to the original site and, and the kind of things. And that also people complain about it that you have other side and so on. However, you know, to put things in context, that AMP has gone a long way in the, in, the, in the last three years. And we have actually addressed many of the concerns. And some of the concerns have been addressed by actually improvement, improvement in the web platform itself. For example, serving the um, 
AMP pages from the cache with the origin URL has been addressed via a new web API, a new web standard is called sign, sign exchanges that allow you to distribute um, certified content from a given publisher, no matter from what platform is delivered. Without going into details, uh, you know, as you said, the situation has improved so, so much. And also it's very important to mention that uh, an objective of the AMP project as well is try to get the learnings. Like AMP has uh, provided a well lead path to provide awesome user experiences in the web. And then one of the objectives is try to get some of those learnings and then bake them in into the web platform so everybody can get advantage of them without using AMP. And we will be making AMP more lean and then we will focus on providing high level complex functionality that actually can be done efficiently. Awesome, thank you for, for walking us through this. Um, so um, with the AMP plugin for WordPress, a site owner can now make their own AMP site AMP ready, so to speak, but that's not the only thing that uh, it's needed to succeed. What are the pieces that need to be in place for that? Um, was Carl or Weston or Cassie? <laughs> I mean, if I can do it, anyone can do it, right? right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the AMP plugin, it strives to allow you to use AMP in WordPress the WordPress way. So you can use WordPress themes and plugins like you would normally, but uh, the AMP plugin then ensures that the output of these themes and plugins don't violate AMP's specification. And so if you have some disallowed markup like a script or some HTML tag that isn't allowed by AMP for performance reasons, then the AMP plugin will intercept that and remove it so that it won't uh, cause the page to be invalid and, and to hurt the performance of the, the page. And so when you use the AMP plugin on your site, it's best to do so using a theme or plugin that is already known to be AMP compatible, and you can find a list of those on ampwp.org. But as well, if you are using any theme or plugin that isn't already known to be AMP compatible, the default behavior when you use it with the AMP plugin is as if you had JavaScript turned off in your browser because it just removes the custom JavaScript uh, in large part is one of the major things that it does. And so as long as you have a theme or plugin that is a, an acceptable fallback experience for when you don't have um, JavaScript turned on, then you're gonna get that as the baseline experience in your AMP page. But then with that as the baseline, then you can go back in and you can add the AMP components mm -hmm. that add the interactivity that you would want otherwise. Yeah, and this is where I think um, we can ask the first set of um, questions. I got them via email, um, and this first um, is, um, and Andrew Taylor, some of you know him, um, asked, um, where has AMP been most successful? Um, and I'm thinking from the question, it uh, could be either industry and or geographical area, because um, AMP is the fastest way to do it on mobile, so it will also be in uh, emerging countries and developing countries, yeah. I assume, but you probably have a better feeling for that. Yeah, um, regarding the industry, um, AMP started with a focus on the news uh, ecosystem, so it was, that's what it was called accelerated mobile pages. It's not called that anymore, it's just AMP, uh, but at that time, you know, it was very useful for news publishers that had simple pages that needed to be found quickly, all right? But since then, now with all the power that the library has, AMP is used in any industry and can, you know, because the objective is not AMP itself, but user experience, AMP actually can cause a huge impact in any, any domain. Um, respect to the geographic area, um, it is true that, you know, it's, your perception of AMP is different if you are sitting in a 4G network with an iPhone 10. That is, you are sitting in Bangalore, India, with a 2G connection and a $50 phone, right? So for some people, um, for everybody, AMP represents awesome user experience. But for some people, AMP represents the difference between being able to read the news and not. So uh, I would say that in, in areas where there is problems of connectivity, uh, low-end devices, 
um, is, uh, is precious. And we can see how, you know, people in, 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 in Asia and Latin America actually embrace AMP with, you know, because they see the value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that, yeah. Um, so uh, Drew Borden, um, uh, also Pantheon, asked what um, tends to trip up teams um, when they want to deploy AMP. Um, are there any, um, uh, so Pascal, what are you seeing in WordPress support forums or on GitHub in that regard? Um, so as Weston uh, mentioned before, um, AMP has certain restrictions. Um, and one of them is that JavaScript, custom JavaScript is not allowed on your website. So when, when users first install the AMP plugin and they realize that some plugin they use um, adds some custom JavaScript to the website and they realize it doesn't work, uh, you will first have to explain to them why it doesn't work and then you have to show them um, how they can achieve the same level of interactivity uh, using the components that AMP provides. Um, that's what we usually uh, see most. And um, But a good thing is like more and more plugins and themes um, see the potential of AMP and have built in AMP compatibility uh, right from the get-go. So when you have the AMP plugin and you have some other plugin like Chatback, then it, you don't have to make any changes and it's automatically AMP compatible, for example. Another big one is the amount of CSS that a theme is using. The AMP plugin includes uh, AMP, the specification, that limits the amount of CSS to 50 kilobytes, mm. and that has to be inlined inside the page. And the AMP plugin automatically gathers up all the CSS that's being used on a page, including external styles and styles and style elements, and, and then it will concatenate all, all together into the single style element that AMP requires. And then it will also perform tree shaking to remove the styles that are not clearly being used on the page. And, uh, but that being the case, there is still a lot of themes out there that have way more CSS than even the tree shaker can possibly uh, reduce it to the 50 kilobyte limit. So that's another issue that you may yeah. encounter is, is themes and plugins that are just using too much CSS uh, to be compatible. So um, I say hi to Jacqueline Delia and she, um, brought in a, a question. So what is the roadmap for future versions um, of the AMP plugin that might improve adoption? Yeah, so I could start that one. Um, one of the main objectives that, that is in our team is to, to make AMP content creation in WordPress as accessible as possible to everyone, right? And, we, and WordPress is an amazing ecosystem for many reasons. And, and one of the things that I really like is that it's very inclusive, right? There are like developers of all skills level. There are users that know nothing about technology but that can take advantage of WordPress. So we are um, working towards the notion of turnkey solutions for the WordPress ecosystem. Now, AMP itself is a component of that strategy, right? And the plugin does an amazing work. And we estimate that about 80% or more of the work that is needed to make an AMP uh, a site incompatible, the plugin does it for you. Um, and our objective in the roadmap is closing that gap in between what can be automated and what needs to be developed by the, develop, uh, the user itself. Uh, so a lot of the tasks that are in our roadmap are aimed at that goal. Um, well, Weston mentioned that there are already some themes out there um, that already support AMP um, mm -hmm. out of the box. Um, would you have an example there? Um, yeah, the, the GoDaddy primer theme just added AMP compatibility, for example, and their child themes are also in the process of being made compatible, but also um, yeah. the core theme, yeah, Genesis, Genesis yeah, framework is AMP compatible, and the core themes, are AMP compatible in WordPress? WP Forms, the, the font plugin, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Okay, cool. Cool. All right. And then, uh, um, well, what advice would you have for teams who are considering using AMP on their own side? Let's kind of put it on the staging site and see what shakes loose, the tree shaking, not only um, um, 
restricted to CSS, kind of do it with all of it uh, and the plugins and everything. It's pretty much how I would do it. What, uh, what else would, would be good? And I would say that, I could start quickly with that, is like there are two paths, right? So if you are starting a new site or you are trying to convert an existing site to uncompatibility, the first one is easier, right? Because you start from scratch, you know what the limitations are and your focus is to let's take advantage of the power of AMP to build a beautiful site. And then you get uh, a core theme that is incompatible and you style it and that is a, that's a, bit the, the, a beautiful path. The other path is that you have a big site uh, with a lot of JavaScript and huge amount of CSS, and then you want to make it up. And that is a more challenging. But the good news is that the plugin comes loaded with powerful tools and guidance to help developers to identify what needs to be done, contextualize where things need to be done, and then in many cases, automatically doing them for them. So it's, a, it's an analysis. Um, and I, and, you know, I want to let Pascal and Weston to, to pitch in more on, on the details of how you engage with the, with the plugin. But I guess that the compatibility tool is that we cannot go to the plugin in too much detail here because of the sake of time, but it's a process in which you have to, what we call, undebug your site. And the plugin basically tells you, you have a problem here, there is JavaScript, and then you see, and the plugin tells you exactly where the problem comes from, and then you have to identify how to fix it or find a solution. Oh, I'm using a, a, a forms plugin that is not incompatible, but there is one that is incompatible, just let's switch the plugin, uh, and so on. And engage with the forum, okay? Mm -hmm. So the forum is vibrant and, you know, very, very exciting to see what is happening. Weston Pascal, you know, I teach in every time that I can, but it's like, uh, there is a, and James Orsborn have been doing a great job also tackling questions there. Um, so we are here, so let's make this happen. All right, well, awesome. So, uh, but if you're still skeptical about AMP, um, you still can uh, use the AMP stories uh, because the plugin actually, you can switch off the overall AMP part and still use the AMP stories. I find this really as a, um, an entry drug, so to speak, <laughs> 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 a very smart move. Um, <laughs> So let's talk about it a bit. Um, before we get into the technology and the thoughts about the AMP stories, do you have all um, a, a favorite story that you want to show off and um, that you want to kind of talk us through why? Um, Kathy? Yes, I have so many that I love. I love AMP stories. I think the, the way we use the web um, has changed the way we communicate and AMP stories is the natural product of that. Um, so uh, the San Francisco Chronicle has published some beautiful AMP stories uh, with immersive video, beautiful photography. I, I love one that they did uh, after the, about a ballet camp that mm -hmm. resurrected itself after the fires there. Um, that's a beautiful one. It's, it's nice the way the San Francisco Chronicle yeah. and the I'm gonna Washington share my screen and kind of go there. Oh, great. Okay. So you they, don't have have the, they have the slide over slide presentation and the side by side presentation. So in mm. their desktop version, you get the same content as a viewer as you would if you were looking at it on mobile, maybe a little bit more immersive. Is um, that what you're seeing? The show must go on right now? I'm kind of, yeah. We are not seeing that, no. You're not seeing it? We're seeing the YouTube, YouTube channel. Yeah. Um, oh, I need to go. Technology, you know? <laughs> um, how about that? Nope. Huh. Just no. I'm showing the wrong one. Huh. See it? Now, yes. Now we see it. We can experience okay. what that's like to be immersed in this visual storytelling media. Oh, beautiful. You can own your own story with the WordPress plugin. So you don't have to use a third party. You can publish your own. Uh, I think that's powerful. The uh, stories are discoverable in search. You can link to them from your website and link out of them through the stories. The, you can embed them. Monetization is possible with three different kinds of ads. So I, I think this is like 
theme developers and plugin developers and just product developers need to be building in AMP if, if only for the performance and the visual communications of stories. They're just incredible. It's a real opportunity for WordPress uh, ecosystem. And I've, I've got it on my site, I experiment with it. And because we're in beta, some of the stories are still broken and the teams are working really hard at this phase to bring this to its successful uh, finale. But it's, don't overlook AMP. It's not the same as it was four years ago. It is powerful and it is going to be the way of the future, I think. And I, I don't work for the project, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So. Well, thank you very much for walking us through this. Um, so we have two uh, two questions. Um, Jacqueline, um, what is the roadmap for the AMP stories in WordPress? And yes. I think we're going to move that a little bit later when we talk at uh, first kind of talk through it before we kind of talk about the roadmap, what's in the future. So um, I hope you don't mind, um, Jacqueline. Um, so, um, Alberto, uh, what's your uh, favorite AMP story? Uh, well, one of the ones that has like a, both impressed me and shocked me at the same time is a, a, a story that uh, was published by the Washington Post on the Yemen war. Um, it won a Pulitzer Prize uh, for the story. Um, it's a very, it's very like the images are a little bit disturbing because it's about the war in Yemen that nobody is talking about too much. You know, Surprisingly, but um, I think that the reason why it, it won the Pulitzer Prize is it, it shows the power of the format to actually connect the, the reader emotionally with the story that you are telling, right? So it, it actually, you can feel the pain, right? And, and you, wow, and then somehow you are, and then you, the, the story ends and you are like, wow, I went there and came back. So that's what, it's, it's, it's an amazing example of the power of the format for me. Yeah, and I, I like how the, yeah, how the, the pictures like this one, and then the, the following text is kind of on the background of the exactly. last picture. So yeah. It, yeah, it's really- it's the, it's the first AMP story to ever win a Pulitzer Prize. Right, yeah. Right? That's awesome. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and how about you, Pascal? Do you have a favorite one? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, so just recently, so the Washington Post one is really a, a great story as well. Uh, but just recently I stumbled upon a story by uh, the National Geographic about the Stonewall riots uh, 50 years ago. Um, so I hadn't heard of it before, yeah. um, but, but uh, when I tapped through the story to learn more about it, um, it really it really caught my attention. So this is like the immersiveness that we all talk about. Like you see these pictures, uh, you hear the voices of people in the videos, um, so it's always like a very amazing uh, way of, of consuming the content. When I was 16, it's about who? So we have sound coming through, but I, it's not for me. <laughs> Maybe it's it is. Story, yeah. It really gives you a sense of what it's like to be there or to talk with these people. You get their gestures, you get their voice. Yeah. And this is, um, so the, the AMP stories um, are actually mobile first. And uh, the uh, and that really grabbed me. And it was the first mobile experience that I actually enjoyed community has come up going through. Um, so There's still boundaries, but. Uh, so I had a few sound things in there. But it was the first mobile experience that I really said, well, this is new, this is totally exciting. And you can combine the, the pictures, you can combine text, you can do animation um, and, uh, and, and video and the, uh, yeah. So this is really cool. Um, what about you, Wes? Can I say Sorry. one more thing about AMP stories? Because I'm a little bit passionate about AMP stories. <laughs> the other thing I want to say about AMP stories is stories as um, media exist, right? Like, so there's stories in Instagram and, and Facebook and these private channels where you are the product for those companies. With AMP stories, you own your own content and you are not a product of some other business. It is 
so much healthier. It's like a non-toxic version of stories on top of the fact that you can do such amazing journalism. So I think that's important to point out. Yeah, absolutely. And the, the, uh, this one, um, I have always had a hesitation with Snapchat and Facebook and Instagram because their stories are most of, most of them are ephemeral unless you put a, a certain effort behind it, yeah? And as a, a, a professional content producer, and, but the most businesses don't have someone who needs to connect every single day with new audiences and, and keep I, going, they can't afford it, yeah? I would argue that it also feeds into a dark pattern of addiction on phones where you got, oh, I might miss out on something. Oh, it's only gonna be there for a second. And I don't think that that's mm -hmm. good for society. Yeah. Absolutely, FOMO is real, <laughs> fear of missing out, yeah. Uh, so, um, yeah, so uh, uh, Weston, now you, that you joined us, there is that uh, exercise to kind of show off your favorite AIM story. Do you have one that you can think of? Uh, well, I was just thinking of the one that Alberto uh, referred to, so I'm just going to copy him. Yeah, that's, that's, that's how we impacted all of us because this one is yeah. like revolutionary. Okay. Um, so, um, well, let's uh, grab Jacqueline's questions. Um, all, uh, what is the roadmap for AIM stories in WordPress? I, um, I did a little research and I, so my idea was, okay, there was these other story kind of things. Can we push it you know, like a, um, to those other places? And you cannot because none of them have open APIs for that. Um, so, but yeah, we're getting a little uh, bit away from the question. Um, Pascal, what are you going to do next on the AMP stories? Um, well, there's just so many things I would love to work on. Um, so what we did uh, in, in, um, around Work in Europe, we re released the first version of, of the AMP plugin that con contains the, the AMP stories editor. And now we're just working on making it better and better every day, um, making it more user-friendly as, as authors to create amazing stories um, using basically Gutenberg editor under the hood. And that contains a lot of things. Um, oops, I'm hear, hearing some sound. Um, <laughs> um, so next we, we're going to release uh, like a minor version with some uh, minor bug fixes and improvements uh, to the editor. And then we have like a long uh, roadmap with uh, new features coming up in the editor, uh, making it easier for you to create this immersive experience um, without having like all these uh, knowledge, without having to develop a single, a single thing. Um, so yeah, lots of stuff coming up. Jackie, my colleague and I, we have a request. We will put it in GitHub too, but we would love to be able to turn desktop view offer on on a per story basis. Oh no. What basis? On a per story basis. So as you publish okay. a story, you should have the option of whether or not it should be also a full landscape mm. mode or not. I'll put it in GitHub, but I just wanted to plant it's, the uh, seed. Sure. That's an <laughs> excellent uh, suggestion. Um, and of course, having like desktop support also means uh, you need to, a way to make sure it looks great on desktop too uh, mm -hmm. while editing, which it uh, causes lots of challenges for us developers to make this happen and make it as seamless as possible. So um, my request, <laughs> if I may chime in there, <laughs> is what I, 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 uh, I really would like is kind of to have um, a Ken Burns effect um, on the still images to actually make them move a little bit or zoom in slowly um, into it. Um, I don't know. Is that a pipe dream? Granted, granted. We are gonna we wanna push <laughs> you. Yeah, you're not the only one. Um, so, so I wouldn't think so. <laughs> Ken Bourne yeah. requested that too, so we wanna. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, for for those who don't know, Ken Burns effect is like when uh, image is like moving and zooming at the same time. Uh, if you would want to build that uh, on your own um, using web technologies, it's might be a bit more difficult. So what we want to do is make it possible with like the click of a button. Um, so that, that's one of our goals. 
Yeah, that's the Gutenberg goal for anything, right? <laughs> and I wish we mentioned also that uh, also to Pascal and, and, and Weston and the team that are doing that because one of the things that is important is that um, developing, developing the AMP Stories editor for WordPress has actually uh, required deep knowledge of how Gutenberg works and working with the Gutenberg team to actually there's a synergy between the both projects, right? That we discover something and then probably they are doing it or they, we feed them and then they improve the Gutenberg editor or we take things that they are doing and prove it to the, to the editor. So it's a thing, um, uh, we have been working at the leading edge of WordPress uh, as, a, as a platform and at the leading edge of, you know, formats for the web that is, you know, as I'm sorry, it's a new, very new format. So it's that, you know, Thank God we have a, uh, the best team. Yeah. It's, did it's you say really bleeding good. edge or did you say bleeding edge? Uh, bleeding. I, I intended to say bleeding edge, but I said bleeding edge. Okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Um, if, if I understood, uh, so Weston and I, we kind of, and I know now why I thought you were in Australia, because it was in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> that we were doing, meeting on Slack and you were telling me about new things and uh, not middle of the night, but it was kind of four o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning. And I normally <laughs> am not up that, uh, at that hour. Um, and you, um, you mentioned that you needed a certain um, Gutenberg, you need the Gutenberg plugin. You cannot do this with a WordPress 5.0 version right now. You need the Gutenberg plugin. What are the things that um, in the plugin that you uh, specifically needed for or need for AMP stories? Pascal can better answer that. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, so um, when we when we started working or building on top of a prototype that existed, when we started working on that in January, um, we we used uh, the version or we 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 used WordPress 5.0 uh, to build on top of that. And during development, um, we of course like we encountered some issues here and there in Gutenberg. Uh, Gutenberg was also under heavy development, still is. Like there's a new release every two weeks or so, or every month. And um, sometimes there were things in it which were like crucial um, for for the M Stories editor as well. Um, not only new features, but also bug fixes. Um, so once we were working on it, and then like. Uh, the editor was crashing and obviously that's not not a, a good thing and that's when we came to the conclusion that it makes more sense to require this specific or like the latest version of the Gutenberg plugin uh, because it offers just the best user experience all right well what I was really fascinated about is that I can turn my text into um the vertical kind of text <laughs> really cool <laughs> all these little things but uh, it makes for a nice visual experience but uh, Kathy I have a question for you um, you worked on the um, design implementation um, for that but uh, do you have a kind of a, a, yeah ideas what are, what is a, a best practices to create amp stories um, when is too much too much yeah sure I think I think it's a minimal story visual storytelling medium. And at amp.dev, the documentation for amp and amp stories at amp.dev is incredible. Before you make an amp story, you should look through the best practices there because it will save you a lot of like frustrating hardship on like, you don't want to put large volumes of text. You don't want things moving around too much. Maybe you want one or two videos. I can't wait for Ken Burns effect for things. Um, so you, you want, you know, when you put text over a picture, it can be difficult to read. So using a background color in your text over a picture and an image in the background is nice or video in the background. It's, it's just fantastic, but you have to be, use restraint because sometimes less is more. Like my first story was like a woo, 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 crazy. And I was like, okay, now I know how everything works. Let me go in and refine my presentation. So the documentation is great. Oh, good to know, good to know. Um, I just came back from Boston and I have not stopped talking about it yet. <laughs> and it's the, I was at the Inter Institute for Contemporary Art um, and they right now have a, um, an exhibition called 
less is a bore. <laughs> <laughs> less is a bore, huh? Less is a bore, oh. yeah. Kind of when architects and designers, they kind of bleed the, um, they, they fuzzy the line between decorative art and fine art and say, yeah, who cares? We want to do this and it's art. So yeah, it doesn't matter. But yeah, and so I had to laugh and then we kind of talked about this, but it is, um, depends on your audience and who you are um, telling the story to. Right. Um, yeah. Um, Jacqueline has another question. Um, thank you, Jacqueline, for the questions. Are there any considerations developers need to pay attention to um, when building custom blocks in WordPress for AMP compatibility? It's not so much about AMP stories, but they are, I think um, um, we have the experts here to talk about this. Uh, yeah. Well, in terms of the editor itself, there's not really anything special that you need to do for AMP. Um, it's just, the main thing is make sure that if you are, if you have custom styles that your block depends on, you should enqueue those styles only if you are including the block on the page and that will the, the tree shaker does remove styles that are most styles that are not being used, but it's the tree shaker is very effective at tree shaking something that didn't exist to begin with. <laughs> so if you don't need the CSS on the page, don't include it on the page. And that's, that's the best way to go. Um, and then if you have dynamic functionality in the block, then you may want to make use of a render callback that will have a check inside of it to see if the is amp endpoint function returns true. And if, if so, then you can return amp specific markup, like using amp components. And otherwise, you could fall back to the original content. So you could do a conditional uh, block in that way. But generally, it's uh, your blocks can be just the way you normally develop them. Awesome. Yeah, good. Well, that's a, a relief to hear, actually. So, um, when we talk about a business case for AMP stories, now we're, we're playing around, we find it cool, we're photographers, we're doing it on our private site, um, but what's a business case for, um, to, to, what are stories that businesses could build together um, or put together for um, showcasing things? Um, what ideas are you? Uh, we could start to answer the question. It has multiple things uh, that can be said that, but um, I think that it's important to always keep the, you know, the ultimate goal, right? So success as a web publisher is all about user experience, right? And user experience entails many components. One of them is content quality. What is your content strategy? Uh, Amp Stories is an awesome way to expand your content offering to your users. So um, it's, 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 it is useful to have something to say <laughs> in a story because, uh, so you have to have something of value to communicate to your leadership, right? But I see Amp Stories as an, as an addition to your repertoire of tools, right? So you could have, for example, uh, a blogging strategy in which you out augmented it with AMP stories that allows users to go and get immersed into something that you want to say and then come back to your blog. For the travel industry, right? So if you are selling travel packages, you could, hey, you know, we sell these packages in Europe, check this one, and then you go and suddenly you, oh my God, I want to go there. And then at the end of the story, you say, bye. And then you go back to your site and then you close the deal. So these kind of things, all we thinking, how are we going to make our users happy? And wanting to consume what we are producing. Yeah, that's my, my perspective. Yeah, it's a huge compliment to your existing content strategy, for sure. Yeah, uh, I, I would um, argue that if before they get into deep, they probably want to see AMP stories with the highlights of things. Yeah, and then if once something really interests them very much, you need to definitely provide also the connection with the deeper um, content or the, yeah, the details and all of that. Um, so um, when 
when you do uh, when you work uh, with the news sections, um, news need to accommodate ads. Uh, what is um, the part? So I can see that you're just going to have one panel that would be an ad and then go back to your story. But are there other ways um, to um, implement that? Um, yeah, so basically that is the, the monetization strategy is you have to have pages that are adver uh, advertisement. Um, the question is how do you do that in a, in a way that doesn't interrupt the user experience, right? So you, you, you would not be allowed to insert an ad at the second page of your, of your story, or you would not be allowed to insert two pages of ads back to back, or like certain percentage of pages of the overall story. Uh, so some kind of like user experience on the, on the ads part. Um, the, it is possible uh, to, to do that. Um, the, Monetization capabilities of our stories is evolving. Um, and now I would say that it's like, simple. Um, and the runtime then helps to ensure that these premises are satisfied. Like, and you just say that you want ads, and then um, without going into details of how the communication with the ad network, if you have direct sales or not, but basically the runtime is going to say, OK, you want to put an ad, I'm going to let you put it here, uh, and so on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't, you don't, uh, I mean, you could manually create a page with, that has an image on it that you consider to be an advertisement, but generally if you're connecting with an ad provider, then you, there's a thing called a AMP story auto ads uh, that, oh, okay. that you configure with a filter and then you supply the configuration, uh, the declarative, like a JSON bot uh, array object that just tells the app provider how to configure the ads to be injected into the story. And then it's done for you. So you don't manually create the, the story pages with the ads on them. OK, all right. Um, so how are the ad provider publishers kind of adopting to the ads, uh, to the AMP story ads format? Well, that is more like the AMP project itself. So AMP has support for many, many, many ad providers and ad networks. So AMP Stories is tapping into that ecosystem as well. Um, and the advantage of, AMP, of, of doing it via AMP is that it's very declarative as Weston indicated, right? So you specify which provider and what is your account ID and things like that. Um, but it's always this interaction between the AMP ecosystem and the ads ecosystem, similar to what's happening with analytics as well. It's much more readable format, though. It's not like when you're reading a, a post of a web page content and it's like add every other paragraph and you're scrolling through, you can't even read those. With I think the format that's being introduced with Google AdSense and, and Ad Story in AMP Stories, it's like old magazines. Like one page would be the ad. You know you're at the ad, you scroll past the ad. It doesn't disrupt and push like so much stuff into your. It's pretty effective. I think it's a good format. I'm sure it will improve, but. Um. Yeah, brings us back to the original why is AMP even in the world is because yeah, advertising and publisher kind of ruined the, the web for all of us. <laughs> <laughs> and now we need to kind of go back to the basics. So Anne Kassif, um has a question and um, um, it is, do you think Google will start penalizing sites for not using AMP? No, no, not that. So I, th I think, us, yeah. So for us, you know. yeah, the way that the, sorry, the perspective that I, that I bring to this is like, um, we are not interested in AMP because of AMP. It's just like, we don't, you know, um, the ultimate goal is user experience. You, Google wants users to get a user experience that is awesome when they uh, engage with the web. Um, we may penalize, and I, I cannot talk for search or anything, so my pers it's my perspective, right? But speed is a factor in ranking, right? It's like one little in this humongous equation that determines the, the, the ranking in the search results. So if you offer bad user experience, then you will not succeed. And if you don't succeed, you will not show up in search results because people are going to be looking for you. People are not going to be linking to your content. People are not going to be interested in your site because they don't want to see it. You know, 
most people is going to abandon your site if you load in more than five seconds, 10 seconds. So it's not a, so AMP is not a signal by itself. It's quality. So if you have, a, if you get to a very fast website um, with the tools that you're already using, you don't need to um, apply AMP to exactly. the site exactly. because yeah. it also will have um, um, a fast um, user experience. Um, so that's pretty, uh, that's good to know. Are there other things that you need to do for, uh, with the AMP stories to, for the, um, for sh searching, yeah, kind of, I don't know, meta tags or anything like that. Is that built into or what makes Google find those AMP stories? Pascal? <laughs> so, uh, I mean, in the end, uh, under the hood, uh, an AMP story is just a regular HTML document that can be found and linked to uh, on the web. Um, so if you link to your story somewhere, uh, and so that Google and users and other search engines, search engines can find it, then there's no difference. Um, there's this, um, I think, I'm not sure if it's still experimental, but like in Google search, it highlights uh, visual stories like separately um, yeah, that's gonna, 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 the carousel. Yeah, so like, um, besides features that could be part of the search product, right? This is a search, the search results are different from the search features as a product, right? So the AMP stories carousel doesn't mean that we are modifying the search results to show AMP stories. And the AMP stories carousel is a feature of the search results page that is just like, you know, um, but to complement what uh, Pascal said, it's like AMP stories are just AMP HTML, uh, sorry, HTML content, just, just uh, open web. So anything that you do with for SEO also applies for AMP stories. You know, make sure that your title is representative of what people could be searching for. Mm -hmm. um, make sure that you make your AMP stories like exciting so people link to them. So if a lot of people link to your story, you want to show up uh, at the top. And you could take advantage then of the features of the search product that actually highlight stories. But your story has to be good. So just because you have an AMP story doesn't mean that you're gonna put a, a bunch of like single color pages with emojis and then you're gonna show up in there. That's not, <laughs> that's not so... Well, except you're in the travel, uh, travel industry, <laughs> yeah. right? Because Google in IO, uh, at IO this year, announced that they are favoring AMP stories from the travel industry as the first first time kind of, so people get a little bit more excited about it and get some benefit out of it um, to uh, advertise their destinations. So I hope the, a lot of um, um, tour guides and uh, travel bloggers actually take advantage of that because all of a sudden they kind of get ahead of maybe TripAdvisor, maybe yeah, other um, travel sites that have been um, on, the, on the web and helpful to the web uh, for everybody. We did, we did notice today some of us um, who are experimenting with optimizing our stories for search did notice that stories are coming up under image search. Okay. So, um, you know, I think as stories are more adopted, they're, they're going to have to be good solutions for sharing them beyond what mm -hmm. we have now. I experiment on my mm -hmm. site and I'm using Yoast to optimize my content and my stories. So it works well for search, but Yoast's, I mean, it, AMP Stories is still in beta. It's new. It's not a criticism. But when I share a link to one of my AMP Stories, the, the featured image doesn't come with it. The description doesn't come with it. But the, you can still share out links. So that's going to get better and better. We're going to make sure, right? Mm, yeah. yeah, and the, the AMP plugin provides an RSS feed for the latest stories. Yeah. So okay. even if you don't directly link to them anywhere, they will still be discovered by crawlers. Mm -hmm. And it does also automatically generate the schema.org metadata. And so I'm curious, Kathy, why you're not, you didn't see a featured image um, when you shared it. So that might be a bug. Yeah, OK. It might be. I was surprised. I keep testing it with the new versions, and I'm, it's just the link, just the, the mm. So it doesn't one. come with a with a card on Twitter or on Facebook that doesn't pull the image in. Yeah, it so should, it should, but if it's not, if you could post an issue, Kathy. I will. I'd be happy to. Do you want to say something, Pascal? 
No, oh, just want to say uh, thanks for testing and raising this issue. Good, good. So we're up to our last question. I'm sorry, we're a little bit over, but um, Jacqueline has, um, when building AMP stories, how does image sizes, video clips, etc., affect the performance on serving those? Best practices we, yeah. That's an excellent question. Um, so there's two things. Uh, first of all, in, in the AMP stories editor for WordPress, uh, we try to encourage you to uh, not use like too big images and too big images or too big videos. Um, so there would be warnings in, in case uh, a video is like too large. And of course, we also try to uh, use reasonable image sizes, uh, not, not like the full size image, but uh, one that is contained to the size of the story. And second, because of uh, because M stories use AMP under the hood, um, it will try its best to uh, not load uh, images and videos uh, too early. So if you have like a 20 uh, page story, uh, the images and videos from the last page won't get loaded until you get near there, uh, which just makes it very uh, user friendly. Mm -hmm. also, uh, Go ahead. Pull request open for Jetpack to extend its Photon module to add special support for stories as well to ensure that if you have images, a full size image that you drop into a story and it doesn't have the image size generated for a, a story page, then it will constrain the height so that it won't be excessive. And then for video though, that that's an open question, still trying to figure out the best way to, I mean, WordPress doesn't have a, WordPress has the ability to resize images when you upload them, but it doesn't have any ability to transcode videos or resize videos. So that's a, big, a challenge. And seems it, like a great opportunity for someone to create a platform where you can s upload your video and have it AMP story ready and take it away. Like that could be a service. Well, it wouldn't be so nice if Google didn't have a video thing. <laughs> <laughs> And there's options like video press and cloudinary and other options, but yeah, that's that's an open question yeah. that we need to still figure out. The it's, in, it's in our roadmap to solve that problem because it's definitely a, a must. Yeah, it's also probably um, interesting to see what happens with the image when you have them one on mobile, but then you s flip the switch and kind of somebody sees it on desktop. That's a whole different aspect ratio. Um, and obviously also a different size um, in terms of download. So that's going to be really interesting in how that's going to be handled. Can I ask one more question quickly? Yeah. Um, in terms of live stories, like live stories are part of the roadmap for the uh, WordPress plugin, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, so live stories uh, itself, like in the M stories um, feature is a rather new thing. And uh, we were excited to to play with it for the for the uh, WordPress editor as well. So I can see that like in a sporting event where you show a, like they're on hole number four on a golf course and you show at progression of the game with your AMP story live and it updates live. That'll be awesome. Yeah, I'm not golfing, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not golfing either. But it was the only example that popped in my mind. <laughs> Yeah, so I think uh, I, I could talk with you uh, for all day long uh, because I'm so excited about the AIM stories. And But I think it's all the time we have for today. Um, has been very interesting and inspiring. So, wow, well, I got so many ideas to nice. go back and, uh, well, I'm not going to do anything else now. I'm going to do all my photos and um, do something without it. Um, at this point, I have two more questions for you. Um, and first of all, is um, do you have any announcements you couldn't get in before or that you want um, people to keep in mind? And the other one is, um, if people want to get in touch with you, what would be the best way? So do you want to start, um, Pascal? You get all the noise anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, uh, the, I think this is a good reminder for people uh, to mention that AMP is an open source project. And so is the AMP WordPress plugin. And um, especially because like the AMP stories editor is so new, we, we're, we're looking forward to hear everyone's feedback. So if you're interested in like getting involved and just let us know, um, we're, uh, we're listening. And uh, yeah, the, the best way to get in touch with us, uh, I guess, so for, for the plugin, 
uh, will be GitHub. Um, so it's github.com slash amp project slash and dash WP. And otherwise, it's Twitter. Um, for me, it's at Swiss Speedy or Swiss Spidey. And, uh, Alberto, what, what, what's your Twitter handle? I Al Medina. I, that's my, it's like a, the, the, the Twitter handle of a kid, but that's mine. But I don't know how to change it. <laughs> oh, you keep it. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. What I would like to say that um, just to remind that us at the CMS team, um, AMP stories is one element of our more comprehensive. Uh, story that we are uh, trying to push, like it's like making WordPress the, you know, an awesome platform for creating and consuming content. And there are several aspects to that. AMP is one, we are also working on the Google Site Kit that brings Search Console analytics, monetization, and page speed insights in an easy way to your site. Uh, we are working with the ecosystem on trying to advance the notion of funky solutions and so on. So, um, but all this is gonna happen is all, the, the, we all work together. So like uh, we are, I'm so looking forward to what we are gonna do as an ecosystem, as a community. Uh, so let's do it. Yeah, we also are gonna be releasing the 1.2.1 version shortly. And there's a beta out available on GitHub right now that you can test. Also in, in addition to AMP and Scikit, we're also working on PWA okay. for WordPress. And so that enhances a WordPress site with the ability to access content offline, to um, do things like installing it to your home screen and add more app-like functionality to a WordPress site without having to radically change, or even not having to do anything special to, to do that. Um, so just uh, uh, an intersect um, PWA is progressive. Progressive web. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. yeah, and it was 0 0.3 version should be published soon. And this is what was used on the WordCamp Europe website to allow for the offline or to allow for the schedule page to always be available, even if the Wi-Fi connection was flaky. Mm -hmm. uh, progressive Web App is actually just quickly is is a term that it's an umbrella term that refers to a, a set of technologies like you know that allow you to create you know app like capabilities to your to your web application you know like the ones that was to mention but just like for the audience that may, maybe some have not heard the word pwa before yeah thank you so much i'm grateful cassie what was the question oh my goodness you okay. have an answer that you, could, that you couldn't get in before <laughs> well yes i guess I guess I want to compliment the project because I think that they're um, that the project being open source and having a written governance document is such a healthy sign and a great foundation for the community to grow with it and understand it and communicate well within it. I'm uh, working with uh, the governance project for WordPress to try to just put a little bit of structure in place, not make rules or change anything, but just illuminate and have things written down. Um, so I'm doing that. That's a little announcement. You can find me at kathybosco.com where I'm experimenting with AMP stories and AMP now, uh, thanks to help from my colleagues like Jackie, who called in with some great questions. And I'm on Twitter at Be The Breeze. Um, so I'm slightly obsessive. So once I get really immersed in a project, I tend to kind of hang on for quite a while. And I really <laughs> love this. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much. Um, so my announcement is that next live Q&A will be next week, August 2nd at 2 p.m. Eastern and 18 UTC, where we'll be talking um, about using Gutenberg to bring speed and flexibility to news and editorial sites and not the end. <laughs> but it was not part of it, but yeah. So a big thank you to our viewers. Um, yeah, it was some great questions. And if you have more questions, you can always reach me on the poly at uh, gutenbergtimes.com. And um, if I can answer it, I know where the experts are. I get the, you to, um, and the recording will be available in a few minutes on YouTube, but the, I pushed it actually to the wrong channel. So <laughs> I tweeted it out though with the right uh, um, link and I will move it over to Gutenberg Times in a bit. 
um, and the transcript will be available in a few days and then we'll publish uh, both of it on the Gutenberg Times. Um, as mentioned, this uh, site, um, this show was sponsored by Pantheon. Big thank you again to the team. Um, and if you want to sponsor not, um, our next live Q&As, please contact me as well. Uh, thank you, Kathy, um, Pascal, Alberto, uh, Weston. It's been a privilege for, um, to have you on the show and a great joy talking to you all. Uh, thank you for all you do. Yeah. Yeah, really appreciate it. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, everybody be well. Um, goodbye and good luck. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye, everyone. Let's get out of here. <laughs> There's my link here. Bye. <laughs>